Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do a quick sketch of a chick or a duckling, a duckling, why do I wanna say chick? Let's just do a duckling here. Um, I wanna thank everyone for their, <laughs> their well wishes. I uh, I um, was coming down, I thought I was coming down with a cold or something. Um, I had a sore throat on Monday when I did my lamb uh, tutorial and um, I it never really turned into anything. My sore throat went away yesterday and unfortunately I had kids homesick, but um, I that's as bad as mine got. So what we have is like an oval here and we've got a circle here. And so that's gonna be the duck's body and head. So if you get these basic shapes in before you worry about putting in any details, uh, it's gonna be so much easier because you don't, you're not gonna be stressing about like, oh, I just spent 10 minutes drawing that perfect beak, but now it does, it's the wrong size or in the wrong place. Um, so you don't have to worry about it when you do just kind of your basic shapes first. Um, since I'm using a, wa a watercolor pencil, these lines will all dissolve. So I don't have to worry about, uh, about anything like that. So we get the wing here. It's kind of like a rounded triangle. And just kind of get this uh, fluff bundle here that's going to kind of turn into a leg, one of the legs. And then the, um, the beak. I'm just trying to get my line in for my eyes. And the beak's going to come off the, the front here as a triangle. Eyeball here. And we're going to get our legs. The legs are not very long on a baby duck, duckling. we got their webbed feet. So that's a, that's a pretty um, important feature. That's going to make it look a lot more like a duck and less like a chick. And we want to give them a nice stable sturdy um, sturdy place to stand so we're going to get this other leg in here it's going to it's kind of foreshortened hidden by some of the body so we're not going to see quite so much of the leg and um, there's some fluff coming down a little bit more there that little I didn't know they had those little uh, little kind of like toes on the back like chickens do all right, so now that we've got our basic shape in, um, if we want to put our duckling near maybe like a little puddle or something, we can just kind of sketch in a little puddle there. I could sketch in maybe a few little rocks or something. I'm only going to put one little duckling in here. Um, you could sketch a few more if you'd like. I will share a reference photo um, that has some other ducklings if you want to, uh, to throw them in, but I'm just going to stick it, keep it kind of simple. Um, I'm going to do a very quick wash and, um, I think what I'm going to do is just kind of, oh, my sprayer works, lightly spritz my paper and just grab a, um, any brush really, any brush. I'm going to just do a little bit of a, uh, just a little bit of a wash in the water and the puddle here some cerulean blue, it's just because it's a nice soft blue. Now any um, extraneous lines I can dissolve at this point, which is really helpful, really nice about watercolor paper. I'm just using um, inexpensive watercolor sketch paper. This is the uh, Aquafine, it's in my cache sketchbook. I'm gonna go with a little bit darker water too some ultramarine blue. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to it just to kind of dull it down a little bit. It's background. I really don't want it to show up too much. I'm going to take that same mix. So you take your burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. You mix them together and you get a really nice gray. So I'm going to put some of that in the uh, kind of background. I'm going to go over the legs a little bit so that when I paint them in I don't have a weird line. Um, I just put lotion on my hands, so I might end up with us uh, with resist on my paper. So you got to be careful about that too when you're when you're painting. If you've this time of year, it's still very dry here. It's snowing right now, actually. While I'm while I'm painting this, second third day of spring, second day of spring, I guess, and it's snowing. I want to soften that edge there. That's the reason I want to put a background in. That way, you can be real sketchy when you draw. And I'm just going to throw in a little bit of sap green and just let it kind of float out. And that just kind of takes your quick sketch, makes it a little bit more painterly. Your 
eyes will fill in any other details. You just want to get a little something in there. Okay. Um, I think I'll also just do some washes with my watercolor on the chick. I'm going to grab some yellow ochre. Chick. Duckling. I mean duckling. So I'm so glad I didn't get sick because I've got so much, uh, so many different projects on my plate that I want to work on and I am still working on the big craft room purge. I've been just filming little uh, bits here and there as I have chance to, to work on them and I'm really pleased with how it's coming out so I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys when it's all done. Should be done, gosh, I don't know, maybe even within a week. I'm taking my time and doing it right. It does take a lot of time just because when you are um, kind of using the KonMari method, you do have to uh, take your time and decide on everything. Um, I am going to pause it and dry this, and we'll come back and work with a color pe watercolor pencil. Okay, that took about a minute to dry with my heat tool. I've got this um, watercolor pencil colored banana, and I'm going to go in here and put the brightest colors on my chick and we got that kind of around the uh the face here i also have a and i haven't used it yet i there's a there was a pencil in my kit called Alab alabaster and i'm wondering how that would go um because i've never really used the lighter colored colored pencils i always just kind of dilute the darker ones but I think it might be kind of cool. So I'm going to try using a little bit of that too. It might give it kind of a gouache look. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I've also got this color here called Charcoal Brown, which I think will be really nice for our beak. Okay, get that bill in there. I want to be careful to get the shape accurate because, here we go, get that little bit of a curve there, duck bill there. And I also want to go in again and get those legs redefined. I, I softened them a little bit when I was doing the background because I was afraid that um, I was a little too sketchy with my lines. I didn't want all those lines to, uh, to be there and show. Just want to make sure I have it about right. I think there's only, I think I can only see three toes there. Get this other guy sketched in here too. It's their little foot. Sometimes when you're sketching quickly, you're, you're not as accurate as, uh, as you would be if you're sketching on uh, like a scrap of paper and then transferring it. I also want to use this color for the shadows, um, like under the face, on the body. They're not even really shadows, it's just how some of the wings and feathers are a little bit darker. You get a lot of nice shape in that way. I don't know if you can hear this or not, but there is like crazy wind blowing. I got a wind chill of like 14 degrees today. A little bit on a little of those darker feathers up on the top of his head. And I do want to get the eye in there just because I think that it kind of kind of gives him a little bit of life when you get that in there. Okay, so, and I think I might just leave some of the lighter areas light. I do want to try this alabaster pencil because I don't know what that's all about. It doesn't seem to be showing up here. Maybe you have to have it on something, something a little bit darker. Maybe this would be good to do, like, um, the highlights on the, like, the sh kind of shiny highlights on the beak or something. I might still need a darker color in here, but, or maybe I'll just pick up a little bit of the ultramarine blue from my watercolor palette because that, that uh, charcoal gray, I'm surprised at how much um, orange it seems to have in it. So this uh, ultramarine will kind of 
tone it down a little bit. Um, this brush here is a Fusion by Royal Nickel, and I like it because it's a little bit stiffer and, it, and it's nice for pushing um, the pigment around. Although flat brush would even push it around more. I just want to make sure when you're dealing with watercolor pencils that you don't have too much water, so that's why I don't use the um, watercolor brushes I typically use with watercolor. Again, just adding a little bit of ultramarine blue from my watercolor palette to kind of get rid of the uh, the orange. The watercolors in my palette are Winsor & Newton artists. And the pencils are Spectrum Noir Aqua Blends. Used very sparingly. I don't have a lot of pigment down there. You can lay down quite a bit, which is kind of nice. I think I'm going to switch to a small flat. That was a little big. Or a small filbert, either way. Something with a little stiffer bristles. That way I can kind of scrub back and forth. Not even really scrub, but I can really liquefy those quickly. There we go. Just make sure you don't have too much, too much water on there. And when you um, liquefy them, go with the direction of the feathers. You know, you don't want to go up and down. You want to go with, like if you were going to pet the duckling, uh, go in the direction that the feathers would go. So for the, the wings, it's going kind of contouring the body. The body's kind of like an egg shape and you're just contouring the body. So my lines up here to the top are curving up, the ones towards the bottom of the feather. Bottom of the wing are curving down. You can leave some of your marks alone if you want to. You don't have to. You can always go back in with more pencil and add more definition and marks if you want to. I find that if you don't use too much pressure, you can keep some of your uh, some of your pencil marks too. Because there's plenty of white on a little duckling here. So I'm going in and putting in some marks. I do want some more definite marks with the darker pencil too. And even though I haven't sharpened this, I mean, it's still keep giving me a pretty, I mean, I haven't like sharpened it today. It's, it's not super sharp. It's still giving me nice sharp lines. You want a few wispy stray pieces to give you that really fluffy texture. And this charcoal brown is just going to show up so much better than the yellow, so it's great to to give the uh, texture wherever you like, just because it's going to show up, whereas the, the yellow and the alabaster color really, really won't. You don't need a lot of colors to do watercolor pencil art, because you can blend everything. You can mix things. You're best off if you have to pick. Get some brighter colors because you can always add more water to mute them down. My only exception would be is if you're looking for like a skin tone set, then you probably would want something with a lot of earth tones. Um, but, you know, if you're just looking for a really kind of general purpose, you're better off to go with you know, brighter colors. quite happy with this with this foot. I feel like I've got the uh, shape kind of wrong, but 
I'm going to try to fix it here, just kind of. There, it's a little bit better. A little shape to the beak. Once you get, um, once you get more comfortable, once you've gotten your foundation down, then you can go in and be a little bit more definite with your marks. So I'm just gonna decide if I want to go in with a black or an iron gray. I'm gonna try this iron gray just because I think that black might be a little too harsh and put in my final details. This isn't very dark. Maybe I will need the black. I can always still always add the black. I think I'll start off with this and see how how this does. Because it's going to be a lot harder to undo something with black, black. I typically don't use black in watercolors. Um, and I really don't use black in much, but gouache I'll use black. I think that, I don't, I think the only rule, I don't think there are any rules. I think just kind of learn your color theory so that you'll know when you get to a situation where, yeah, that I think I would like to choose to use black in this situation because I think it will look good. Or you'll know that, well, if I use black here, that's going to kind of mess things up and I don't think I'm going to use it. So this leg is much more like underneath and in back and shadowed. So I want to kind of get that. And this guy, I just want to have a little bit of definition in between the webs, like in between the toes so on the webbing, I guess. And then I think I'll just throw like a little bit of um, shadow on the ground, I guess. Maybe I'll just do it with this pencil, the same iron gray, and we'll soften that out. Get some of these pebbles. That's really all there is to it. Um, hope you give something like this a try. It, sketch every day. I mean, I have enough tutorials on my channel that I, I mean, I've got about 1600. So if you need help coming up with an idea of something artsy to do each day, go ahead and check those out. Or just open up your sketchbook and look around and see what you can find in your own, you know, backyard, your own home that you can sketch. It's just a wonderful, uh, wonderful practice to get into. I'm going to flick a little bit of this color on using a it's a different brush. I like to do that a little bit. Give me the texture of like a little dirt path. That a little bit with the iron gray color. A sketch is, is just a sketch. You know, it's not some crazy important piece of art. It's something for you to learn with. It's something for you to practice and um, and it's fun and it's enjoyable and you can do it only even if you only have a few minutes. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll have the photo of the finished picture as well as a reference photo on my blog thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com if you'd like to check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.